So what do you what do you think about the state of our country? Do you think things are getting worse? I think it's a racial powder keg about to explode, and I'm we're actually hoping for it. Most of the people in the Klan want it to. We want the racial tension. We want a race war, a full out race war. And racism is a big issue in the United States. Well, racism is always going to be a big issue anywhere. You can't have two different races or three races. You can't have as many people living on one continent with this many different religions, this many different cultures, without one trying to step on the other. I mean, that's just common sense. But you, you could argue that the Klan is contributing to the problem, no? No, the Klan ain't contributing to the problem. You can just sit back and let the blacks do their own job. I mean, let them keep killing each other in record numbers. We ain't got to, the Klan ain't got to go out and kill blacks no more. We just drop off some liquor in their town and some guns, and they do it themselves. <laughs> if it was my option, every weekend I would go up to Chicago with a big truck full of whiskey and crack, marijuana, and a ton of guns and bullets and tell them have at it and just drop it off right in the middle of town. And then go home and watch my Monday morning news and laugh the whole time. All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, or Kaha Kodash. I want to give double honor to that apostle, and others, great millstone of rule, well, teach well, peace and blessings to you, sincere, I can that portion of truth all over the four corners of the earth. We can make it on our truth and sincerity. All right. This is going to be concerning civil war and race wars, you know, which were really basically on the brink of all out chaos, riots civil war and also race war you know you see what's uh brewing over in texas and various other areas concerning these uh so-called immigrants or migrants coming across the border and different laws and legislations that have received a lot of kickback and uh ultimately Civil war is going to be induced and forced and, and gaslighted, so to speak, by these wicked elites, all right, which ultimately, you know, this is the work of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, because the Most High controls these wicked elite Edomites on the left-hand side who are in the position of power, who are in the power seat, okay, according to Job 9 and 24. But like you heard this uh, high ranking level member of the KKK say, you know, they're, they're, they're looking forward to, you know, civil and race wars. All right. You know, because contrary to popular belief, <laughs> these people think that these organizations and groups, these activists, these uh, left wing and right wing and the KKK also cease to exist anymore all right or they were dismantled all right which in, in reality you know they're stronger than ever it's just you just don't know who they are okay because they have you know mingled in with your every average day people so to speak all right just like in times past but moreover you know they take orders okay they have order amongst their organizations and groups but they do still have secret meetings but they have order and they're you know they, they've received orders to, to, to lay dormant, to not do certain acts, okay? To just wait, to be patient, because they're going to get their time to lay their hands on you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man, okay? And we're getting very, very close to that time, all right? Now, first, let's go to Matthew 24. This is... Matthew 24 and 6, it says, Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. All right, wars and rumors of wars. Hey, and, and you could you could uh, uh, correlate that to civil war as well and race wars. All right. It says, For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of of sorrows that's right man nation against nation kingdom against kin kingdom all right concerning you know a hey, hey, the 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 main nations that are going to be you know at each other's throats and necks in 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 in, in race wars is, is jacob and esau all right you know the the israelites you so-called negroes latinos and native americans verse you know are against 
the so-called white man, all right, which is this biblical nationality is an Edomite, okay? You know, now in Civil War, you're going to have Edomites on Edomites, <laughs> so-called white on white crime. <laughs> you know, you're going to have these other nations clashing and getting each other. Hey, you're going to have Jake fighting Jake, okay? You know, especially as we enter into, uh, you know, Jacob's trouble, okay, which we're right there at the doorstep. Now, let's jump over to Second Ezra. This is going to be a quick video. Second Ezra, um, let's go to Second Ezra 15 and 15. It says, For the sword and the destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. And you best believe these Edomites are ready, man. You best believe they're tactically trained and they're still training and they're waiting for this, these, these times we're coming into. All right. A lot of them are ex-military. Okay. And, uh, you know, they're looking forward to, uh, <laughs> you know, acting upon their hatred for you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. It says... For the sword and the destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. All hell's got about to break loose in these streets. All right? The comfort is going to be taken away from the people. You know, the, your electricity, your heat, your AC, the, the, the leisure of having a phone, and being able to call 911 for help. All right, being able to run to the grocery store, to hop in a car, to travel, you know, to have a little bit of money in your bank account, all that's going to be taken away. All right, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is about to strip the comfort from you people. It says, For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. All right, they're not going to be worried about the police. They're not going to be worried about going to trial, going to court. They're not going to be worried about getting caught on camera. All right, they're going to take their actions into their own hands. And you're really going to see the true nature and the true mindset to these people that you that the, that these, you know, your your everyday up good upstanding citizen, <laughs> you know, hey, well their true nature is going to come out, man. And Esau is is, is going to going to show them horns, man, on a very high level. You know, cuz a lot of our people think that a so-called white man is all right. He's a good guy, you know. That, that we're supposed to forgive him for the for the atrocities that he's done to our people and then that he has these so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans' best interests in his mind when it's complete con contrary. It says, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. They're going to take matters into their own hands. It's going to be a survival of the fittest, so to speak, out here, man. All right? And 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 you women, man, oh, man. You women are in for a treat, man. <laughs> Verse 17, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. Man, it's going to be a time of great fear, turmoil. All right. Distress, mourning. All right. Running and hiding. Death. All right. America's going to have a horrible stench. A horrible smell to it just from all the dead bodies from people just dying and laying in the streets and decaying all right which is you know when that rain comes and and, and washes the the dead the decaying bodies matter you know down the street and into the sewer system you know you can just do the math how this place is going to smell it says a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the store. That's right. All out civil war, man. You're going to have neighbors fighting against neighbors because one neighbor believes in this. Another believe, believes that the migrant should be here. Another believes the migrant should be, shouldn't, immigrant shouldn't be here, that the border should be closed or the border shouldn't be open or this state versus this state, this law versus this law, Democratic versus a uh, Republican. All right. You know, Trump supporters versus Biden supporters or Whatever the case may be, this place is completely divided on all levels, man. Like Yahweh Shah said, a kingdom divided with, against itself uh, cannot stand, roughly paraphrasing, man. All right. It says, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Great tribulations are coming upon this place, man. And the prophets have been on the scene. All right. 
blowing that trumpet, warning you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, but the majority of our people, they ain't listening, man. You know? Let's jump back to Matthew 24, and let's go down to verse 12. It says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, man. All right? What, what, what did, uh, what did, what did uh, uh, Dave Chappelle say when he was uh, dressed up like Rick James? He said, cold-blooded. Yeah. You know that a hey, people people are uh, you know that that love you know that love is in the air hey, that, that that shit went out the window man okay you know people are on edge all right let me read that one more time it says this is Matthew twenty four and twelve because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold all right now let's jump over to we're we'll close out on second of the six. Let's go down to verse 22. It says, And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. This place is, is, is systematically being taken down by Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh, Shai. All right. Everything's going to be completely shut down. It's going to look like a ghost town. You know, you know, a, a good movie or a good series to check out is uh, Fear of the Walking Dead, man. You know, that's literally how Babylon's going to look. You know, and just like the overrun, the, everything overgrown, you know, everything looks like it's just <laughs> hasn't been open in years, you know, and, and just a darkness over the land, you know, and then in the fear of the walking dead, you had zombies running around trying to eat people. Or hey, according to the C D C, you know, that's uh you know, that's not far fetched, okay? Because they're pre preparing for a so called zombie apocalypse and we very well could be seeing it. This new disease that you're this new disease that you know, disease X or whatever, you know, I don't want to go too much into it for obvious reasons, but you know, we very well could see that. All right, it says, and uh, the full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty, and the trumpet shall give a sound which, when every man hear it, they shall be suddenly afraid. And at that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies. Friends fighting against another like enemies. Okay? That's civil wars, man. Okay? And you're seeing over there in Texas, the, the National Guard, you know, versus, uh, I forgot the name of the other, other uh, group organization, you know, that wants to take down the razor wire. Another one wants to set up the razor wire. And there's like, you know, some type of gray area with the laws. You know, but for lack of better details, but you know, ultimately this could civil war could really pop up, pop off out of this, you know, which ultimately would 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 turn into a race war, okay, a race and a civil war, you know, and this has happened on American soil in times past, okay. It says at that time shall friends fight one in one against another like enemies and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein the springs of the fountain shall stand still and in three hours they shall not run all right lord willing now is that a fine to the next time shalom what do you what do you think about the state of our country do you think things are getting worse i think it's a racial powder keg about to explode and i'm we're actually hoping for it most of the people in the clan want it to we want the racial tension. we want a race war a full-out race war and racism is a big issue in the United States. Well, racism is always going to be a big issue anywhere. You can't have two different races or three races. You can't have this many people living on one continent with this many different religions, this many different cultures, without one trying to step on the other. I mean, that's just common sense. But you, you could argue that the Klan is contributing to the problem, no? No, the Klan ain't contributing to the problem. You can just sit back and let the blacks do their own job. I mean, let them keep killing each other in record numbers. We ain't got to, the Klan ain't got to go out and kill blacks no more. We just drop off some liquor in their town and some guns, and they do it themselves. <laughs> if it was my option every weekend, I would go up to Chicago with a big truck full of whiskey and crack, marijuana, and a ton of guns and bullets and tell them have at it and just drop it off right in the middle of town. And then go home and watch my Monday morning news and laugh the whole time. <laughs>